Welcome everybody to Fails and Flails, a YouTube channel for all things tabletop gaming. And today I'm going to be talking about my very first time DMing for Dungeons and Dragons ever. I had never played before, but I had been watching Critical Role and Acquisitions Incorporated and I thought it looked like a lot of fun, so I figured I'd give it a shot. So I got the D&D starter set and I kind of read through it all and figured, you know, I was good to go. The issue was I didn't have anything to play with. So I went to the local comic book store because I knew they had groups. Unfortunately, they were all full. Uh, so I was basically at a dead end there. Uh, then I thought that I'd uh, ask around the football team, see if any of my teammates wanted to play. And surprisingly enough, I got like five or six dudes who were all interested in playing, none of whom had played before, with the exception of one guy who'd played about one or two games before, and one guy who'd read all the Drizzt Warden books and uh, was super into it, especially once he found out that it was set in the Sword Coast. So we get together, everybody rolls up their players, we end up with a Barbarian, a Fighter, a Druid, and a Cleric, I believe, and maybe a Paladin too? But uh, anyway, we get rolling, and uh, you know, basically the whole thing starts off with them being ambushed by goblins, which they're able to take out pretty quickly actually. Uh, again, large in large part because of a mistake we made which is that we were adding proficiency to their damage as well as their attacks to hit. At level 1, with a plus 2 proficiency bonus, that's not huge, but considering goblins only have like 7 HP, it, it definitely turned the tide in their favor. Uh, so they end up clearing out the goblin cave and, you know, they go over to Phandalin, start taking on a few side quests and all that fun stuff, uh, before they decide they want to check out the town of Connieberry or uh, Old Owl Well, I can't remember which one it was, but it was the one where basically it had been ransacked by orcs several years prior, so it was totally abandoned and completely empty. And when I read that, I was like, oh crap, what should I do? Because it'd be pretty lame if they just got there and it was totally empty and there was nothing for them to do. So I start flipping through the monster manual, and I pretty quickly come across Blights, which are have a CR of one half, one quarter, and one eighth. And I'm like, okay, perfect, you know. It's kind of out in the wilderness a little bit, you know, they're weak creatures, that's perfect for some level 2 adventures. So they end up, you know, dispatching the Blights after several rounds of combat, and at which point they start looting the area, uh, as they should, and I figured I'd be nice and maybe give them like a magical item if it was like something a little bit more low tier. So I flip through the Dungeon Master's Guide and I see Bag of Beans. So like, okay, beans, twig creatures, that sounds like it would go together. Uh, which turned out to be a huge mistake for later on. Anyway, so they continue to go through like all these side quests, still completely ignoring the main storyline here, and uh, do all those. And then they decide they want to check out the town of Thundertree. Uh, and if you don't know, there is a CR5 Young Green Dragon in this town, which is big trouble for a group of level 3 adventurers at this time. Uh, so they get to the town, they chat with the druid for a little bit, and you know, take out some of the cultists that they encounter uh, before deciding to plant one of the beans from the bag of beans. I roll to see what happens, and of course a treant is spawned there. Uh, now again, you have to roll to see if it's good or evil, and luckily for them, uh, it was good, and through some good rolls on their part, as well as convincing it uh, by giving it some food and water, they uh, talk it into joining them. Uh, and then they head over to the tower where the dragon is. I'm sure you can see where this is going. Uh, well, the barbarian provokes the dragon immediately by throwing a javelin at it, so obviously combat just begins right there. Uh, it, on its very first turn, the green dragon hits them all with their breath attack, because they're all clumped up. You know, obviously they haven't really figured out fighting tactics yet, because this is maybe our second session at this point, maybe third. And uh, drops one, brings everybody else down to like super low HP, and it's looking like it's going to be a TPK right off the bat, which obviously would be a very poor uh, first impression of Dungeons and Dragons for them. Well, it's the cleric's turn, and he casts Aid, which normally gives you a plus five temporary hit point. What he says, though, and I, it's my mistake for taking him at his word for this, uh, he wasn't doing this to cheat, he just didn't know either. He said it fully healed everybody up. Which would not only be a very broken first level spell, but is just complete nonsense. But we are all very naive and new to the system at that point, so I was just like, okay, sweet, alright, everybody's back to full hit points, I guess. Uh, anyway, so then they, as well as a Treant, who does most of the damage, 
continue to wail on the dragon until he's down to a few HP and he flees, as he obviously would. Now, the starter set says that if at any point he's reduced to less than half of his HP, he flees. The reason he didn't flee sooner is because he was at a little bit more than, or a bit more than half HP at the end of his one turn, and then everybody wails on him, and especially with the Treant, who does two attacks for a lot of damage, he gets brought down to a few HP, so when it's finally back to his turn again, he takes the opportunity and just, well, flies off. Uh, of course, you know, they try throwing some spears and javelins at him, and a couple of them hit and actually manage to kill the green dragon. Now, obviously, everything here from the beginning was totally messed up. Um, you know, a group of level 3 adventurers should never, ever be able to bring down a level 5 dragon unless they're, I don't know, have like an actual plan going into it. Um, obviously, that's all on me for giving them a treant. Uh, but, I mean, they all had fun with it, and uh, they enjoyed it, so I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. Anyway, they end up going back to Fandolin. And, you know, they've got a whole bunch of gold and loot at this point. So they go to the general store and, uh, you know, see what kind of stuff they can buy. Well, for the starter set, it says that because Fandolin is a smaller town, uh, that the items that are available there are capped off at items uh, with a max price of 25 gold or less. Well, you know, they've got, you know, a huge bag of gold and they want to spend it. So they look at the map and see Neverwinter up to the northwest. Even though it's a few weeks travel away, they decide they want to go there. And I'm kind of internally freaking out at this point because, you know, the star set has nothing for Neverwinter in it. So I just kind of have to improv and make things up as we go. And uh, they end up completely ditching that campaign. Like, they never go back to Fandolin. They never follow the rest of the storyline there. They just abandon it. They end up hopping on a ship heading south and basically just derailing the whole thing. Um, so that was definitely interesting, especially for me, because I was freaking out internally the whole time, uh, because I hadn't really done much for improv before, and, uh, you know, I had to just kind of, like, make these things up as they were happening and just, like, you know, pull it out of my head. Uh, but honestly, looking back on it, I think it was pretty good practice because, you know, obviously I was a new DM, and as a dungeon master, you know, you have to be able to improvise. So it was good practice there. Uh, you know, the campaign went on for a bit while after that, our group ended up getting bigger, we ended up having like nine guys at one point, and uh, I even actually established a Dungeons & Dragons club at my college, uh, which is pretty cool. We got funding from the school and everything, so we were able to buy all the source books and modules and dice for everybody uh, who didn't have them, and um, from what I hear, it's actually still going on today, which is pretty cool uh, that, you know, even though it's not much, I was able to leave a little bit of a mark behind and, uh, you know, provide an outlet for people who have never played Dungeons and Dragons before, or for people who have, and are looking for a group to play with. So obviously because of, I've been DMing the last five years, I've got plenty more stories, some of them good, some of them absolutely abysmal. Uh, you know, if there's any interest, I may make more videos like this in the future. Uh, if people want them, uh, we'll see uh, how we go from there. But that's all I got for today. Uh, so once again, this has been Fails and Flails, a YouTube channel for all things tabletop gaming. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like and subscribe button so you can keep up with all the videos I'm going to be putting out in the near future. And feel free to check out our Discord, uh, Twitter, and our Patreon. Like I said, that's all I've got, so you guys have an amazing day.